filled medic can be the most valuable person to your team. Having a good medic can make the difference between life and death. Let's take a look at the medic's starting equipment and weapons. The medic starts out with the HM Tech 101 pistol, the 9mm pistol, the scalpel, and then the medic grenades. The HM Tech 101 medic pistol weighs 1 pound and costs $200. It does 20 damage per shot, 114 damage per second, and its healing darts will heal 15 points. Each healing dart costs 50%. If an enemy is shot with a healing dart, it will do 33 poison damage over time. And it takes 15 seconds for the medic pistol to fully charge. The medic pistol is a fantastic weapon, even though it is lacking in damage. The ability to heal and the low weight is simply amazing pretty much with any class, and especially the medic. The medic grenades will do 50 damage on initial explosion and then 5 damage per second over time to any enemies hit, as well as it will heal all allies 5 health per second and it will apply medic effects. The medic grenades are some of the best grenades in the game as you can use them both offensively and defensively. They can also be used to great effect to give all of your team the medic buffs just by throwing them into the middle of the team. The scalpel and the 9mm are okay additions to the medic's arsenal. I find myself using the scalpel quite a lot for the first few rounds as I just hang on to the medic pistol for quite a while. And the 9mm pistol is okay, but the medic pistol is just better than it. The first weapon that you can purchase is the HM Tech 201 submachine gun. The medic submachine gun weighs 3 pounds and costs $650. The medic submachine gun can do 15 damage per shot, 200 damage per second. The healing darts heal 15 hit points. It costs 50% charge rate per each dart. It does 33 poison damage like all healing darts. And it has a 15 second fully charge time. Overall, I don't really use the medic submachine gun all that much. I know plenty of other people do when they buy it to help them out in the first round but not a lot of people hold on to it. And I believe that's simply because the medic pistol seems to function nearly as well as the medic submachine gun. The next weapon is the HM Tech 301 medic shotgun. The medic shotgun weighs six pounds and costs $1,100. It shoots six pellets, each of which do 20 damage, up to 120 damage if all pellets strike. It can do 600 damage per second. Each of its healing darts heal 15 and cost 40% charge rate and it takes 12 seconds to fully charge. Overall, the medic shotgun is pretty solid. Even though it does lack damage compared to the other shotguns, it still has decent burst damage and can be used fairly effectively, as well as weighing six pounds can help it fit into certain arsenals. The next weapon is the Hemogoblin. The Hemogoblin weighs eight pounds and costs $1,100. The Hemogoblin does 55 damage on initial hit and then does an additional 50 damage per second in bleed damage to targets. The Hemogoblin can do 220 damage per second each of its healing darts heal 20 points, as well as cost 40% charge rate, and it recharges in 15 seconds. The Hemogoblin syringes also have unique effects, them being 30% more incapacity chance to enemies struck, enemies will do 30% less damage, enemies are slowed by 30%, and enemies attack speed is slowed by 25%. Overall, the Hemogoblin seems pretty good, but with its long reload and its heavy weight, it can't fit into many arsenals that you would like it to fit into. And then the final medic gun we're going to be looking at is the HM Tech 401 Assault Rifle. The medic assault rifle weighs 7 pounds and costs $1,500. The medic assault rifle can do 35 damage per shot, up to 438 damage per second. Its healing darts will heal 15 hit points, and it takes 30% charge rate for each healing dart. It can recharge in 10 seconds. Overall, the Medic Assault Rifle is the best medic gun for the medic, as it allows you to heal fast and effective for your team. It also does good damage and decent damage per second, making it ideal for cleaning up trash zeds as well as any sort of medium zed. The medic's passive perks are syringe recharge rate, 8% per level up to 200%, syringe potency, 2% per level up to 50%, bloat bile resistance, 2% per level up to 50%, increased movement speed, 0.4% per level up to 10%, and then armor 3% per level, up to 75%. So now that we've looked at some of the medic's weapons, as well as passive perks, let's get into some of the medic builds. The first medic build is the standard medic build that you will see the most often in any game, and it mostly relies on just healing other teammates. At level 5, you can go between symbiotic health and resilience. Overall, this one is personal preference. You can pick either one. Usually, symbiotic health is the more chosen one for teams, as then you can be the medic for yourself without having to take the time to actually heal yourself. You can just heal allies. Resilience, on the other hand, 
does make you more tanky, so that's why it's more on personal preference as to which one you would like. At level 10, you can pick between Adrenaline Shot or Combat Doctor, and this one also goes to personal preference. Both Adrenaline Shot and Combat Doctor are pretty good. Adrenaline Shot will allow other teammates to move faster, which can be very helpful, and Combat Doctor will allow you to move even faster as well as hold more bullets in your magazine. Now, holding more bullets for your guns does help you out quite a bit if you want to be more towards the front line or just kind of hanging back with the medic rather than always sticking to the back and just healing people. As then you can actively clear out any of the smaller Zeds without any trouble. Adrenaline Shot on the other hand can be very useful and can save teammates lives as the bonus move speed can really help them. And that's why it's more up to personal preference. Do you want to be moving faster and doing a little bit more or do you want your teammates to be moving a little bit faster? It's your choice. At level 15, you can choose between Focus Injection or Acidic Rounds. Focus Injection is always the more picked one here, even for other builds, because the Acidic Round damage is extremely low, only doing about 5 damage per poison and then about 1 damage per second after that. So the damage is extremely low and the Focus Injection will just help your team out much, much more. I would only say take Acidic Rounds if you're playing by yourself. At 20, you get your choices between Coagulant Booster and Battle Surgeon. Again, neither of these are bad, but usually you go with Coagulant Booster as it helps out your team much more. And Battle Surgeon really isn't necessary because the 20% damage you're getting is not making your guns that phenomenal. It's pretty much just making them average. At 25, you get your choices between Airborne Agent and Zedative. Airborne Agent is definitely the more picked one here, as as soon as Zed time triggers, you just start spewing out healing gas, which will heal all allies around you, and even after Zed time ends, as well as poisoning all Zeds around you, pretty much making it so no little Zeds can grab a hold of you. So onto the second build, this is pretty much just for solo, and that's going either Symbiotic Healing or Resilience, your choice, and then Combat Doctor, Acidic Rounds, Battle Surgeon and Zedative. Overall, Medic's not the best class to play solo anyway, but if you want to, you might as well go with all right side because you're just gonna do a little bit more than you would normally. And then the final build that we have here is kind of a hybrid between the two. At level five, you pick either Symbiotic Health or Resilience, it's up to you. At 10, you can pick uh, Adrenaline Shot or Combat Doctor. I would say Combat Doctor would be better for this build. At 15, uh, Focus Injections definitely beats out Acidic Rounds. At 20, uh, 20 Coagulant Booster is probably better here. And then at 25, Airborne Agent will just help your team out a lot. Ultimately, this function is pretty much the same as the standard medic build, just going with Combat Doctor. This will allow you to move around a bit faster, as well as give you the bigger magazine size. That might be useful for cleaning up any sort of the trash Zeds or any of the medium Zeds. Alright, let's take a look at some loadouts. The first loadout is the loadout that I go with and that I've seen a lot of other medics at higher levels being on Suicide or Hell on Earth go with. And that is sticking with the medic pistol for a while and then just trying to rush the medic assault right. And then using these pretty much just to heal your team as much as possible as well as providing a little bit of fire towards your team. The third weapon that you put on there is completely up to personal preference and to how the team is built though. The four that I picked the most are the crossbow, the flamethrower, the dual 500, and the double barrel. The reason why I picked the crossbow is that it gives you more damage as well as it can help with scrakes or flesh pounds on bigger enemies and it helps at choke points to where you can just shoot multiple zeds quickly. The second being the flamethrower, this is more if your team is lacking small zed control. So if you're lacking a fire bug or a command or a swat or something, that can clear up the small zeds. Because the flamethrower, in my opinion, is probably one of the best weapons for clearing up small zeds. Although, getting the flamethrower does make it so you have to sell the medic pistol. So then you're left with only the assault rifle and only the flamethrower. So if you're up against any large zeds, you're pretty much screwed with this. Third option is going with the dual 500s in your arsenal, as this will allow you to deal with big things like scrakes and flesh pounds. Not particularly the best, but it will help you more. As well as with dual 500s, you can effectively reload cancel and use it as a pretty reliable source of damage per second. And then finally the double barrel. The double barrel allows you to get places even faster as well as protect yourself at close range. Using the alternative fire with the double barrel, you can move very quickly around the map and heal all allies. At the higher difficulties, this likely won't be all that necessary because allies tend to stick close to one another and want to stay close to the medic so that they don't die. Alright, the second loadout we got here is going with the medic assault rifle and the hemo goblin. 
Now this is going more of a medic build to where you want to debuff enemies. If you want to use the Hemo Goblin on anything big that, that gets enraged or anything that's a medium Zed that may cause problems, shooting a lot of different things with Hemo Goblin to wear them down so that they have all the status effects put on them so they're not as much of a threat to your team. And then using the Medic Assault Rifle as your main weapon to clear up any small things or any medium things. Overall this loadout works just fine. It'll allow you to have two healing weapons as well as debuffs, which can be very useful for the team. The third loadout is going with the Medic Assault Rifle, the Medic Shotgun, and the Medic Pistol. This is going the full Medic way, and this is mostly picked if you need a lot of healing, if your teammates are constantly getting hit. Because this allows you to go from the Assault Rifle healing, switch to the Shotgun healing, switch to the Pistol healing, and then switch back to the Assault Rifle, and pretty much have a never-ending cycle of healing if it's necessary. The fourth loadout we have here, is going with the Medic Assault Rifle, the Medic Submachine Gun, the Medic Pistol, and the Double Barrel. This allows you to have three Medic weapons that heal as well as the Double Barrel which you can move around faster with or escape sticky situations and help protect yourself more at close range and against larger Zeds like Scrakes and Flesh Pound. And then the fifth build is going to be rather vague. Pretty much take any Medic weapon and any other weapon that you want. I've seen this be done with the Medic Shotgun and the Rocket Launcher. I've seen it been done with just about everything. The reason for this is the Medic does not get any sort of damage boost for any of their Medic weapons, or any weapons in general. So they can really use any weapon with having no real pros or cons to it. Aside from, you always want to have at least one Medic weapon with you simply for healing because your heals are going to do the most healing out of any of the characters. Alright, on to some Medic tips. The first medic tip is always be alert. You want to constantly be aware of what your team is doing. You constantly want to know where their health is sitting at and where their positions are. At the lower difficulties, this is going to be a lot more tricky as the team tends to spread out and do their own thing. But teammates tend not to die on lower difficulties, so it's not as big a deal. And on the higher difficulties, teams tend to stick together. The second tip is buy weapons that help the team. This kind of goes into what I was saying in the loadouts. You can really pick whatever loadout you want. Be sure that you have medic weapons, of course, just for the healing. And then pick whatever other weapons that your team is lacking, whether that be a flamethrower, a shotgun, whatever the team needs. The third tip is jump. I find it very useful to keep jumping as the medic, as it allows you to be a little bit higher than the Zeds and fire your healing darts down at teammates. This will allow it much easier to where your healing darts will hit your teammates and heal them more than your healing darts just hitting Zeds and doing the tiny amount of poison damage that they do. The fourth tip is that you can shoot your healing darts at your allies even when they're not hurt. This will still give them the bonuses that your perks already grant you. So it'll allow them to move faster, have bonus damage resistance, have more damage regardless of whether they're hurt or not. Now make sure that you do heal people that are hurt first, but if everybody's at full health, then don't worry, you can just shoot somebody. You can shoot the sharpshooter or the demo to have them do even more damage, or shoot the berserker so that they're moving even faster, uh, whatever the situation calls for. And then the fifth tip that I have for medics is don't attack any large zeds. Don't attack scrakes, don't attack flesh pounds, unless of course they're attacking you and you kind of have to fight back but don't provoke them because that's just going to be harder for your team to deal with. Make sure that somebody on your team more well equipped than you can deal with them because the medic is not very good against large Zed. Overall, the medic is a very solid class and can be fit into pretty much any team. As in higher difficulties, it is extremely rare to see any team that doesn't have at least one medic with them. Like most other classes, I wouldn't recommend having more than two medics, even though more than two medics may keep your health up even more. Ultimately, their lack of damage can still hurt the team. So, this was my medic guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thank you guys so very much for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys in the next video when we talk about the Demolitionist. Until then, stay cool and bye.